So I'm Lynn McGrain, uh, Education Coordinator for the Royal Ulster Academy and um, this year the exhibition is held in, this is the Northern Bank that we're in at the moment, on the corner of uh, North and Waring Street in Belfast. So this is the 128th annual exhibition. And the work I'm looking at at the moment is by an artist called Susie Ray, she's a photographer. And this work is called Pelagia. Now initially when I was looking at this work I had thought well maybe it means uh, as it does in Greek of the sea or maybe it's to do with Saint Pelagia but actually this is the woman's name um, and it forms part of a collection of photographs that Susie took on a tour of Poland um, looking specifically at uh, people who had survived um, the Holocaust and uh, this woman in the photograph, um, she's set in a room that is actually full of her own possessions. Initially, again, when I looked at it from an art historical point of view, it reminded me a little bit about a oh, 17th century Dutch interior. Um, maybe people like Metsu or Vermeer, where you know he has placed <coughs> Vermeer would have placed a portrait or a picture in the background in order to inform on the the foreground of the picture. But in fact, these are all her own possessions. As well as that, uh, reminded me of that type of interior because of the lighting. But Susie has used completely natural lighting from the light source, which we can't see in the picture, but it's it's uh, from a window. So I mean, it's it's a beautiful example of contemporary photography, but also then um, is reminiscent of say traditional art history too. Okay, so we're looking at Nicola Agnew's um, sculptures of three teddy bears. And what's interesting, well, there's a number of things interesting about this piece, but traditionally and in general use teddy bears are soft, cuddly, um, very uh, kind of emotive objects. They're ceramic and hollow, and also they don't actually have uh, a face. So you're conditioned to think one thing, then you're, I suppose, um, put out of your comfort zone a little bit. and. A little bit distressed then by the fact that they're faceless hollow objects rather than the usual soft cuddly friendly things um, and the poses that they're in are traditionally uh, children's a uh, children's game of hide and seek we have three a circle of three teddy bears one playing peekaboo one hiding on all fours and another behind a box so again it's referencing children's games but because they can't see where they're going, they don't have eyes. You know, there's also a, a kind of a feeling of jeopardy and um, mis kind of a mystique about it too. So it's th this dichotomy between the, again, the traditional and uh, expected and, and the unexpected. This piece that we're looking at now is by Simon McWilliams and it's called The Ark. While it, it does fall into the category of landscape it's an urban landscape so we're looking at a scaffolding um, which is obviously a very familiar site in Belfast and other cities throughout the country um, generally now obviously mostly derelict and left to stand so they could become these type of monuments of uh, financial ruin as such for the 21st century but um, this is interesting as well from the point of view of the media used its oil but it's very thickly applied, so you get this beautiful impasto effect on the canvas itself. Okay, so we're looking at Stephen Pender's work. It's called Self-Portrait Holding Face. Um, this is in the portrait room, so it's themed in terms of portraiture. And traditionally, um, we're looking at portraiture beginning its life as a genre in, we'll say, the early Renaissance, so probably the 15th century, with... Um, patrons such as the Medici family bringing work from the kind of religious context out into a more um, kind of secular uh, category. So they're paying for work that uh, reflects their wealth, their status and you know you've, you've got uh, kind of an upsurge in the portrait in that particular way. So essentially it progresses then um, into this form where it's not just a physical likeness we're looking at, but also a psychological or inner likeness of somebody. Um, very often, we don't uh, 
not in this exhibition, but sometimes we don't even get a face to look at, but it's kind of a more of a scramble of an inner energy. But this particular work, um, one of the things as well to say about the traditional role of portraiture is that it is to flatter the subject. But this work um, is, a, is suppose, a, a hyper uh, true or real uh, depiction of somebody's psychological state. The man is um, holding his face and he's directly lit from the left-hand side. So this kind of harsh light uh, picks out any defects in his physicality. So he's got uh, very noticeable wrinkles and um, lines, but this is part of a character-forming um, portrait of the man. And the light also picks up the, the grey in his hair and the tiny little specks of grey in his beard and the beautiful white cuff um, on his uh, left arm and uh, also on his, and underneath his tie and his collar.